Soft shackles are a superpower. They're extremely light and super strong. This little guy right here can hold approximately 3,000 pounds, which is approximately one blue whale fetus. The noose here is created by it being spliced inside of itself, creating a loop. And this is a button knot where the tails of the knot kind of go back down inside of itself. And you just put this right over there and it doesn't come off. However, the primary concern people have because it goes on so easy is that it would just slip right off, which is a legitimate concern. Now, I've used these for years and I've never had one slip off that I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. But that's because they usually have a load on there constant. If you have it bouncing around or cyclically loading, it could, it could in theory, come off. And knowing that, even with the confidence I have, I would, when my life depended on it, put a little climbing tape right there just to feel better. However, we might now have a solution with a self-closing noose that is brummeled and spliced here, and we're going to break test 12 of these in this video. Let me show you how they work. Now, what makes this soft shackle unique is a brummel type splice that goes up into here. This isn't just splice simple all the way through, but it's a brummel. And if you want to see how to make that, John Tucker, who came up with this design, has a whole video on that. There you have it, self-closing soft shackle. But this basically doesn't ever move down here. Once this is milked shut, the splice aspect of this last part of the softy, in theory, is what's going to keep it in place. And that's what we're going to test is if any of the strength is affected. We're not able to cyclically load. I can juggle this all I want. I don't know how to make this come undone. Now, if soft shackles have ever come undone on you, especially as something like this style, please leave something in the comments so I know that that's possible and I either transfer over to this style or I add more climbing tape. Now, some soft shackles are kind of a pain in the ass to open, which is great, keeps them closed, but what's nice is this has a tab so I can just pull that and it's easy enough to open. Now, John Tucker's soft shackles that we're testing today are 7 64ths and one type that I use for slack lining is an eighth of an inch. Now I want to add the disclaimer that I've never used this as a single loop for slack lining. It's not safe in my opinion, but I always double wrap it. And this is safe enough for what I've used it for. And that makes the head quite small, even though I'm getting this 30 kiloninch inch strength out of this. If I want to go with a single loop, I would go with something with this five millimeter. And if I'm doing stuff at the anchor, I'll go with a six millimeter soft shackle. Now this is an awesome half inch diameter soft shackle. Uh, that I got on Amazon made out of Chinema. I got a video about that. And what's nice is it's giving me a nice bend radius around my Dyneema pulley system. And the bend radius it's giving me is almost 22 millimeters, which is not too much smaller than a shackle pin that I would use like this. But when things break, I don't want this to go flying every time something snaps. And so it's nice having something soft, and this is just another use case for it. But when I got it, I thought it was very interesting how they spliced it. Check this out. It's also brummeled, but it stops right here and it has this loop. And so it doesn't have the same benefits as what John Tucker did, where I like having it open all around here, except for the last part where I think it matters the most. Now, do I think this is going to come undone if you were to milk all this tight and closed? Probably not. This is targeted to off-roaders because they don't want metal flying in their system if something were to break. And I have stuff breaking all the time since this is a brake test machine. So it's very nice when this goes flying and it doesn't hit anything. So all 12 tests today are going to have the same self-closing feature and they're all at three inches from Brummel to the back of the news here. So we have some bonus variations for the nerds is this tail that comes out of the collapsed button knot here is supposed to be spliced in. Sort of like this, but definitely not nearly as bad. This isn't breaking. This is literally the splice sticking out of the side that you can see right there. So the tails that John has are inside of this Dyneema. To understand the tail berries, uh, you got to understand that this is a FID. It's a tool to splice. And the diameter this is intended for is a 3 8 inch diameter of Dyneema. And the length of this is 21 times 3 8 So a proper tail berry is supposed to be 3 to 3 and a half of these. So that becomes extremely long if you're trying to make a soft shackle that's pretty tiny. So John made a proper buried soft shackle. This is an eight inch berry where the last inch is tapered and we've got a video on tapers and how much they matter. You can see that you can only get a soft shackle so long if you try to go by the three and a half of these fids. Now obviously this fit isn't for the soft shackle, but you can see 
that you can't make things very small if you have to bury them a lot. And so he made this more practical soft shackle. And if you close it, you can see that it's a lot smaller, but the tails are definitely not buried enough in here. This is less than half of this one, and we're going to find out if that plays a role in anything. So the last variation we're testing are two different types of knots. These are very similar knots. This started as a button knot. This is a button knot, but this has an extra pass through, which I'll show you. Now they both have what I call a flower on top where this goes, this goes under that one. This one goes under that, that goes under that. Same with this, under, 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 under. What changes is when you turn from the side, you can see that he did an extra pass at one of the four stages. So you have this going under that. And if you rotate it, this under that, this under that. It's very simple. But this one has this under two, and then it has the two under one and the two under one. So there's three things you're looking at. One, two, one, two. But does it really matter? Does it break here? Not usually. And we're gonna find out if this plays a role in anything or if this is super good enough. Now, John is trying to solve the concern of this coming off of the knot. So a bigger knot to him has value but I don't like to feel the knot if this is embedded in my system and I like it to be a little bit easier to get my thing over it. So I kind of prefer to have a smaller knot. If you want a bigger one, we even have an easy overhand method, a video on that, and that's pretty big if you don't mind that. Now, where do they normally break? Well, you've got four strands. You got one, two, three, four, when you're pulling like this. So this is about four times as strong as a single strand except you have to reduce it about half because all the force is being put right here. And so they typically break at the back of this noose and you get more strength if you make this fatter. And because the tails get tucked back in and these tails get tucked back in, I believe these are all going to identically break the same. The berry of the tails has never really been affecting anything. As you can tell, I use this in my slack set machine and one is not tapered and the other isn't even buried and it kind of looks a little wonky, yet it still goes really high. Now, do you have to bury the tails at all? Well, yeah, because it's going to suck this up into the knot a little bit. However, it has kind of met equilibrium in this one. So John created all these notes where it talks about 56 inches of the 764 ths We'll create all these soft shackles here and how much you can cut and bury and taper. And all of this will be on our blog that supplements this episode with all the data from these tests. So let's get started on these. And just to add another variable to the test, I pulled the knot on the static side, I pulled the knot on the pull side, and I actually stuck it in the middle where it seems like that noose is pulling unfavorably against the knot. So all three of these soft shackles broke at the noose, this part here that was going around the neck, but right below the knot. So that's the condition of all of those knots, the shape of them, how they got tensioned. And I think they're still super good enough as far as shape goes. You just don't want them to deform so the noose slips off of it. And here are all three of the nooses. I don't think these tabs have had any effect on the strength. And I'm actually probably going to take them off and use them on the soft shackles that I do have. They're pretty nice. Now, in my experience, breaking Dyneema has a huge variation, breaking identical things. So having a result of 13.51, all the way up to 15.77, I don't think signifies that that bigger knot had anything to do with it, considering all of them are still breaking in the noose. So it broke in the noose on all three of them, and this is what it looks like. Here are all three button heads, and they are a little bit more collapsed than the other knot, but they're definitely going to hold super good enough. The concern, obviously, is will it slip off of this off the back of that head? And I don't think it will. I've never had that risk happen as long as the noose is tight. The condition of the rest of the soft shackle is super good enough, including our self-closing aspect Brummel ending here. You see that it's super good enough. Now we're testing the bigger knot again, and you can see how much that thing tightens up as we pull it. Now the button knot does the same thing, but this knot was showing us a really good example of it happening. So these are not the nooses. That is the pace of the head that it broke at. So one theory I have is if it's not tightened very much and I go and pull it all the way to destruction, that heat is coming right about here and melting that joint. And this is the bigger knot and it's harder to tighten the bigger knot. And this might be one of those consequences. I don't know. All I know is I got the numbers I got. So this is 
the news. It didn't have a lot more life in it. You can see they're showing a lot of wear and how much they got pinched in there. Let's find out if it does the same thing on the button nodes. But this is one of my most interesting results and that I've caught in Indigny about is it's not the noose, not the head coming off, but it's where it was wrapped around the carabiner. And this one was wrapped here and here, and it's around the, where the carabiner was. Almost every time it breaks back here where the noose is. Now, I don't know if this has something to do with the rate of pull or how they were made, if this was like the last ones he was making, or if the, I don't think the taper has anything to do with it because it all depended where it was wrapped around the carabiner. Put in the comments what you think caused this so we can all see if we can come up with an answer. But one of these broke as our highest result and then we got two medium results. For being as tiny as they are, they're all super good enough. Now the reason we use kilonewtons on this channel is because climbing gear is rated in kilonewtons and it's a measurement of force, not a measurement of weight. And so if you're going to drop something on these, you're gonna to wanna to know how much force is generated not how much the item weighs. Now the 764th that we tested is rated for 1400 pounds or 6.22 kilonewtons. And we got almost 12 kilonewtons, which is 192% of its rated strength. And our highest strength was 16.89 at 271%. Now in a theoretical world, if you have two strands and you're pulling them, it should be double. And if you go like this with two strands like that, it should be 400%. But of course you have different factors going on. And that's why you don't get 400%, you get about 200% when you pull any of these diameters that we have in a soft shackle form, specifically the button knots. Now the caveat to getting 200% out of your soft shackles is using a quality HMPE or high molecular weight polyethylene. If you use Dyneema from Samson, you know it's going to be super good enough. The no-name brand HMPE or synthetic winch lines do break okay when pulled straight, but as soon as you put bins in them, which this has bins, it performed way, way lower in our other video. What bothers me now is this Amazon product we found is claiming it's SK75, which is a Dyneema product, a name brand Dyneema product, and the price point they have is way, way cheaper than you can even get this stuff on wholesale. And then if you read the one-star reviews, it's clearly not 23,000 pounds, which by the way is 6,000 pounds stronger than SK75 even is for that diameter. Can't believe that stuff's even legal on Amazon, but I don't know what to do about it other than bitch about it on my channel. If you wanna send me nerdy Dyneema stuff, that will be in the description below and we can maybe pull on some of your samples if you have a variation of this that you'd like us to do.